Not too long ago on this very YouTube channel right here, the Spectra Creative channel with me, your host, Scott Toyguru Nightlick, I did a video about this Kenner action figure from Star Wars from uh, the late 70s, early 80s. Most of you know him as Snaggletooth. The reason I did a video specifically on this character is because the card art does not match the character. In fact, the card art is not even from the movies. It's not from Star Wars A New Hope. And there have been quite a few quote-unquote snaggletooth figures over the years, some tall, some short, some blue, some red. And there is a character of this species that does appear in the movie, in the cantina. In fact, there's actually two of them. But the card art that was used on the figure is not a match for both the characters that were actually in the cantina in the movie, as well as the figure that was sort of a mix and match between quite some interesting source material. All right, so you can see that whole video linked here. But this video got a lot of comments and a lot of views and has spurred on, I guess you could say, this sequel, talking about, well, figures that don't quite match the image. It's not just Snaggletooth on the Kenner cards. Well, I guess Master Yoda said it best. There is another. And I'm not just talking about the whole mix-up between Forlom and Zuckus. Zuckus, excuse me, Zuckus, Zuckus. Uh, you know, that they had their names swapped. I mean, heck, Forlom has also been confused for an Imperial TIE Fighter pilot in official uh, cross-sell materials. So, you know, what you're going to do? Sometimes that stuff happens. No, what I'm really talking about is jumping full-on into the ball pit here and looking at lots of the different card art card photos that don't match the figure. And warning about nitpicking, there's a little bit of that, but hey, I think it's an interesting topic that is worth discussing. So without further ado, let's bring out the usual suspects and dive in. So our first offender is our little droid buddy R2-D2, and I'm not his original release, but the second release, the first update of him, where he now with Sensor Scope. I think by the end, even TM sensor scope there. What are you going to do? It sounds like something you would use for your teeth. Anyway, so the first of the updated R2s in the vintage line got a sensor scope. And there on the package, we see him from Hoth. The original version of R2-D2 was just a shot of him, I believe, from the Death Star. Um, it's a little hard to tell because it's so dark. But it was just a regular standard R2, two legs, nothing popped up. But the head did turn and make the click-clack sound that we all love. This version of R2, here's another shot of him from Echo Base, with the sensor scope up. Now, R2 is obviously the Swiss Army knife of droids with lots of things popping out, and out of his head in particular are two things, the sensor scope and a uh, sort of a rotoscope. So the sensor scope, or at least that's what it was called on package, while in the image from the movie ha looks flat, he does look a little bit more at home on Dagobah versus in Hoth Base with this particular action feature. And looking closely at the other scope, the sort of, uh, well, this really is the sen a sensor scope, or this is more of a looking scope, it is uh, angled at the sides and flat at the top versus the dish that he uses on Hoth looks more like a radar dish. So the actual sculpt of the pop-up mechanism is clearly the scope he uses on Dagobah. Which, nitpicking taken in consideration, means that if you're going to call this the sensor scope and use an image from Hoth on the package, well, quite frankly, that means that Kenner was... Wrong! The correct... The other R2 that had an update in the vintage line was the one with the pop-up lightsaber. And again, the image on the card back shows him from Endor when they're trying to break into the uh, shield bunker and he's shot by a stormtrooper, which we've actually never had a figure of this. Uh, well, actually, we've had him with like electricity around him, but never quite exactly like this. So, hey, you know, at least they got the movie right. All right, the fun of droids continues. Let's look at another one, and this one's maybe a little bit of a bigger offender. So the power droid. The image of the power droid compared to the version of the toy that we got in the vintage line. Well, the image is clearly the one that's belovedly known as Gonk, the power droid from the Jawa Sandcrawler that actually has a line in the movie, if you'll consider Gonk Gonk a line. 
but the actual toy that we got is not based on this power droid. It's based on this one that has antennae and rated our dishes and a smokestack, if you will. This is the one from the Lars homestead when Luke calls down to his aunt and she says to make sure that any droids he buys speaks bocce. Here's a close-up in case you missed it. It's definitely one of those blink and you miss it, but you can see this is blue, he's got the white stripe around him, and what's called the smokestack coming out the top, though I don't think it's a smokestack. You can see a behind-the-scenes shot here with the droid parked next to Kenny Baker having a sandwich hanging out in his R2-D2 shell. So there's obviously multiple versions of power droids out there that are seen throughout the trilogy, but the one from the Lars homestead with the antennae and the radar dishes is a very different looking one. And this was even updated in the vintage line, the modern line, with a correct figure, but the card art still uses the image of the power droid from the Sandcrawler. So while it's great, and I absolutely applaud Hasbro that we got a correct Lars Homestead power droid, which is what the vintage droid was, the card art still shows the Jawa droid. Speaking of swap droid names and images, here's a reverse example. This is the Death Star droid from the Kenner line, where we get our shiny, shiny silver version of an RA series droid with the dark black eyes, kind of the insectoid look. I remember really loving this figure. It was great to have another droid besides 3PO. And the droid that's shown in the, uh, the image and the figure is this guy from the Sandcrawler. Again, next, like Gonk was. The actual Death Star droid is same series, same RA series, but he's black. Another blink if you miss him, walking past Chewbacca in the Death Star. This figure has been released by Hasbro in the modern line and was correctly called Death Star Droid. So it really is that the Kenner figure should have been called Sandcrawler Droid, I guess, for lack of a better word. And speaking of the modern line, here is a Defender from the modern line. So the original vintage release of Jedi Luke came with Luke on a card back that used the image from the vintage line of Luke from Jabba's Palace. But Hasbro, rightly so, realized this was incorrect and renamed the figure Endor Capture and even updated the photo because Luke wears two different outfits, or rather he takes off part of the uh, tunic and wears the uh, bodysuit later on on the Death Star and on Endor. Later on, Hasbro would release an actual Jabba's Palace Luke Skywalker that correctly and even had the uh, brown cloak without sleeves for the very first time in any figure, which was great because this was a long time coming. All right, another category is really hunting down the wrong character. So here's a good example. You've got the Imperial officer, the Imperial commander figure, and of course that's Donovan from The Last Crusade behind him in the card art. But Donovan is not the character you have as a figure. It's a character in a black outfit. And there are plenty of Imperial officers in black outfits in all of the movies, as well as the gray outfits, like uh, Moff Jezerod here from Jedi. Hasbro has released the black outfitted Imperial officer. In fact, they've done him multiple times with multiple heads. Although, man, they really got to do something about that suit. Somebody get these guys an iron. Like, seriously, is that really standard Imperial issue when your suit is that wrinkled? Well, at least we got a couple heads. Another interesting example on the Imperial side is what was first called the Death Squad Commander, but after realizing that was a little bit of an overly scary name, the name was changed by Kenner to Star Destroyer Commander, even though they're on the Death Star, but hey, who's counting? And this figure had a gray outfit with a black helmet. Now, I've scoured the movie. I've heard there are gray outfit versions in the movie. Maybe I'm wrong, and if someone wants to send a link in the uh, comments. But from what I can tell, they all wear black. There is no figure wearing a gray outfit with this helmet. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, because it'd be great to have reference for this figure. I think this figure really falls into the whole Pondababa Walrus Man category, where it's really just early reference, and he's painted gray because gray pops better than black. Uh, even though, you know, Darth Vader's all black. What are you going to do? But, you know, it's just it's not a uh, non-continuity thing. Speaking of Walrus Man, he is one of the few figures, and by few I mean three, that actually didn't have a photo but had art. The other two being the original release of Boba Fett 
And the final figure in the line, the Anakin Skywalker, Sebastian Shaw, Ghost Spirit Jedi figure. Those three didn't have photos at all. And in kind of that classification, we also have a series of figures that also didn't have figures, or rather images, of the character of the toy, but images of the vehicle, like the ATST driver here. Also, the Imperial TIE Fighter pilot did not have a picture of the pilot. The AT-AT driver, which actually was Walter Donovan, and could have actually used that image, but hey, you know, it's great to have an AT-AT on card because they look cool. And then the Rebels got this with the B-Wing pilot in his red and the A-Wing pilot in green. Although the A-Wing pilot did get an update in the droids line where it actually did show an image of the pilot, albeit an illustration, because all the droid figures had illustrations because they were based on an animated series and not the live action. All right, the next category is mix and match. So we might get into some nitpicking here, but things like the Rebel Commander and the Hoth Trooper don't quite match the image in the card. In fact, the Rebel Soldier here is actually the larger offender of the two. The first one is an issue of facial hair. The second one is a completely different outfit altogether. So the Rebel Soldier was eventually finally released in the Vintage series with corrected uh, card art that actually shows the figure, the different outfits, because there's multiple outfits worn on Hoth. And we did get a modern vintage collection version of the Hoth Soldier, although still without the mustache that the original figure had, which I suppose would be this guy, Firist, Firist. So it'd be great to actually get this figure of this character because that's who was in the vintage line. Speaking of facial hair, you saw this one coming. The next up would be the Bespin security guard. So this is the one with the uh, U-shaped mustache, but doesn't quite match the full bearded image of a guard in the photo. We've had a few Bespin guards in the modern line. We've had an Asian one, we've had a black one, and we've had an alien one. Although, don't look too closely at the black one. That is a Caucasian face painted black. Does not have African-American features the way the uh, original toy did. It is actually, you can clearly see, it was a character that was supposed to be Caucasian that was painted black. So what about the mustached guard versus the bearded guard? Well, if we want a figure of the one with the mustache only, there is reference for this. There is a guard that has this mustache, and it's this guy here. So while it would be great to get the bearded guard per the photo, to get a character based on the actual figure with the mustache only, we would pretty much need a figure based on this guy, and it would probably look something like this. So, hey, you know, it could happen. Why not? I mean, it really should. We do want to uh, collect the whole 92 or 96 or 102 or 108. You know, there's been different counts. I've done multiple videos trying to count it. My head still wants to explode. All right, last but not least, probably the biggest offender of them all is everyone's second favorite Ewok, and I say that because we all know everyone's favorite Ewok is Chief Chirpa. Logre? Wicket. Probably Wicket. All right, well, Paplu still goes high up on the chain because he had quite a bit of screen time, especially for an Ewok when there's so many of them. You probably know him best as the Ewok that stole the speeder bike and was able to distract all of the scout troopers away from the shield bunker while they chased him instead of going after the rebels. He also has some other screen time. He shows up later in the battle, you know, wielding a stick and, you know, being all Paplui, etc., etc. So this is not Paplu. That was Ramba. And this is Ramba. Ramba is one of the other many Ewoks. In fact, there were eight Ewoks released in the vintage line, the most of any species, if you will. And uh, Ramba was a great figure, but you can see Ramba is not just on Ramba's card, he's also on Paplu's card. That is not Paplu, that is Ramba. So, you know, it's understandable back in the day that they could make a mistake and not correct this. Ramba was updated in the modern Hasbro line in an Ewok 2-pack, and we got our proper Ramba figure, although we still haven't gotten him, if you will, released in the vintage line on a vintage card back with his photo, which showed Ramba. Wait, I better not open that can of worms. All right, well, if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe, because it tells YouTube to share it with more people. That's kind of the whole point. Give it a thumbs up, a comment. I'll always comment back, and uh, I'll be here next time, and I'll see you in the next video, or on the comment section, or around Greensboro. See you later.